going guys and welcome to RC Cincy. Today I have the Fast and the Furious uh, Jada line of vehicles. So it's basically the GTR, Brian's car, the uh, RX-7, the two different Mustangs, I do believe they're two different bodies. Uh, there may have been other ones as well, but uh, they're basically the same platform, same vehicle underneath with a different body shell on them. That is the only difference. Uh, it's been out for a few years now. I got it right when they came out and I featured the product on the channel and then I started modifying it. I spent so much time trying, I tried, I don't know how many sets of wheels, trying different rims, trying to modify rims, trying to make wheels. Uh, I've done lights, I've lowered it, uh, battery modifications. I've tried three or four different batteries. I found out the best one and I let you guys know. Um, pretty much everything there was to modify about this vehicle, I tried my best. I didn't go as far as putting hobby grade parts in it because honestly, I don't think it's worth it. The amount of cutting and modifications you would have to do to apply hobby grade parts in this, it would just be better off and a lot cheaper to just literally buy the Red Cat Racing uh, drift vehicle I have. It's only like 149 bucks or 159 bucks, something like that. So you'd be better off going that route if you're gonna go that far, but you can do modifications to this to make this better, perform better, and look better. So that's the main goal of this new series. It's the best mods, not just experimenting, doing all kinds of different modifications. It'll probably be the easiest ones. I'll start with the easiest mods, and at the end, uh, probably part two or three, it'll have the harder mods. You don't have to do those mods. Um, you know, you when you modify, you do it at your own risk. Be careful, pay attention, and um, there always is a risk when you modify, just to let you know. So that is not no one's fault but your own if you feel like messing with it. If you don't, that's fine as well. Uh, these are perfectly fine drift vehicles out of the box for the price. Uh, you can't beat them. And currently, I saw this on Amazon at the time of filming this video, for $30 for Brian's GTR, $30. I could not believe it. I picked this one up for Walmart for 39. I think Target has them for 39. Uh, it's been this Mustang lately. I haven't seen the other ones. Amazon had Brian's GTR. So I think that's the best looking one. And in my opinion, I've had that one, the purple Mustang and this one. And then I've had two GTRs, one Mustang and this. So I've had a total of like four or five cars. I've even given one away fully with lights, lowered, uh, remove the bumpers, battery modification, everything, uh, with an extra body with lights in it as well, uh, and giving it away on the channel. So I did do that, but I figured why not revisit this and try to improve on it. Uh, there's some mod mods that I'm not going to do this time around. I figured that it'd be better uh, just to do the best mods only and the easiest, starting from easy to hard. So without further ado, let's start on part one. So right off the bat, uh, I'll just show you really quickly. This vehicle is very basic throttle steering off and on your turbo button. Uh, you press this and then this little spot right here and pull down to change the batteries. It should come from that batteries from the factory. Remember to uh, charge it before you ever run this. There's a USB little thing. There's also a little tool in there. Don't lose it is how you remove these wheels. Just the outer wheel, not the rim to slide on the new ones. It does come with another set off and on switch there. And then your uh, trim calibration, if it seems to be going more to left or right, you can trim and adjust it. So I do like that, at least it has that option. And then as far as taking the body off, it's not hard. You are gonna need something to push. These ones are harder than the original ones. When it originally came out, it had like pin looking ones. This is what I call like an E-clip or a C-clip. Uh, you just push on the one side uh, and then pull it all the way out. So they're not too terrible. They are a little tight. They can be a little bit aggravating at times. So just push these out so we get to the platform. Uh, so like I said, we're not gonna go too crazy. There are gonna be a few harder mods, but in the beginning, I think these mods will make it look better. Uh, it's gonna be about aesthetics in the beginning and then it's gonna get to performance. So once you remove those, this body is actually under really tight. Pop these out, just like so. It's a nice little Lexan body. One thing I'm disappointed about that was not the issue with my other one is look how different these mirrors are mounted and high up. They're in the window. That makes no sense. They should be down here and down here. So a little, you can see how far off this one is compared to that one. So that's just uh, manufacturer quality, rushing them out or whatever it is. That's a bummer. Yes, you could technically pop that E-clip out and make another hole and figure out a way to fill that. Possibly, I'm not gonna mess with it. Just a little drift vehicle. Uh, so set the body back here for now. 
So this is the platform. All of them will look exactly like this. None of them will be different. So the first thing I would do, uh, once you get comfortable a little bit with the vehicle, is remove the bumpers. The bumpers stick out really, really far, and it just does it. <laughs> it just makes it look rough. So in my opinion, I would remove the bumpers. To remove the bumpers, it's very easy. There's gonna be, let me get a pointer here. There's gonna be a screw here and here, and then there's gonna be a screw here in here, once you do that, these will pop out. You have to put, not these two on top back in, you have to put these two right here because it helps hold the front end together. So this one and this one you have to put back in. So you're gonna have two spare screws per, uh, per bumper removal. Uh, total of four, you can see them right here. And the bumpers, the nice part is you can put all this in a Ziploc bag, return them if you'd like. Same thing with the back. One screw here, one screw there. And then of course, two on top, one, one. And then uh, you would remove the bumper. You can actually just pop them in and out like that because they actually stay, the funny part is. So you can just pop them in, let your nep nephew or younger brother run it. If he beats it against the wall, it doesn't hurt it as bad. And then you can pop them out whenever you run it. Uh, make sure to, again, to return this screw and this screw back in just to help hold the, the front or the back end together. That is the back end. So there, that already looks better. The next modification to make it look better is only on the Mustang. Now every car is gonna be a little different. On a Mustang, all I did is went down one post. So there is a Phillips screwdriver, smaller tip. Unscrew this, you, when you unscrew it, you'll see that the hole has been tapped, the one that they use. You just go down one only. And it will lower the back and it'll remove uh, the space. Let's put the body on so I can show you. It'll remove, it'll make it to where the car looks slammed. I mean, it'll be right there on the fender. It's not, you can see that it's not rubbing. That's important. If I was to go one more down, it would rub. And then it looks like the front end technically, let's turn. Technically, I could go down one on the front end. So let's try that. Because I only did the back. I thought only the back could, but now that I look at it, we could do one more. So I'll do the front end with you guys. So once again, you're gonna need a fine tip screwdriver. You're just gonna quickly unscrew this. Just like so, and then let me pull that out. You'll see the hole that it's been screwed into. See that? We're gonna go uh, one down from there. So we'll go, so we'll find the hole we're at, and then we'll go one below that. So it should be, it looks like the post will be sticking out one hole down compared to the old one. So that's a good reference. And if it's too much, you can come back up. You do not want it rubbing, especially for the front. The back uh, will just wear the paint from the inside of the body out. But what will happen in the front is the, the steering will get hung up and being all or nothing, uh, you're definitely gonna get in a hairy situation there. You're not gonna have really steering. So there we go. We have one more screw left to do on this side. So I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. I know these videos get really long and I apologize. It's just I try to be very detail oriented. So you can see that hole there should show the same result, that one post sticking down. It should be the same exact result. It's not gonna be different. Sorry, I'm trying to get my head in there. It's not gonna be different than any other side. Put the screw in there. These are really small, so do it on a table somewhere where you're not gonna lose your screws on the carpet. Oh man, you won't believe how much time I spent looking for screws on the carpet. Magnetic screwdriver would actually be better. It actually help you get it in there. Once you get in the right hole, come up a little bit. There we go. You get it started, get it in the right hole. Not to torque them, but you do want them snug. Uh, being plastic, you can strip these, by the way. They'll just get tight. So there we go. Now let's see if our work paid off. If it's slammed and still clearing, that is very, very important. Let me pop in. Man, this is a really tight body. You don't even need clips on this body, honestly. I'm gonna have to do another mod that I just thought of. So looking at it, we're just clearing. Oh man, that looks slammed. <laughs> now the suspension doesn't articulate in, it has no suspension, so it's not gonna change. That's gonna be able to turn to make sure. Turn it on, turn it on, and do the steering test.
It looks like it's barely, barely, ever so slightly touching when it's max turn. No, I mean, it's like tiny, tiny little bit on this corner. You could technically make another hole just barely above it in between the two holes with a fine, 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 um, something really sharp, like a point, like a really sharp knife or a really sharp, tiny, tiny screwdriver. You can literally make another hole or a small drill. Uh, Dremel tool is what I would use. Technically, you could do that. And another thing I just thought of, since this body is so tight, look at that, there's no clips on it. I'm thinking about trimming my posts all the way down, just enough to where it just basically snug on like that. And then, um, man, that looks slammed. That looks so much better without the bumper sticking out. So that already is a visual enhancement right there. Of course, you're gonna have four screws left over two from each front, like I mentioned. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is start planning for the big mods. So lights will technically be in phase two and then the soldering will be in phase three because it does take me a while to explain that stuff. And I wanna be very, very thorough in this video. So what you can quickly do to kind of plan for everything is there's four screws on this cover. Let me show you really quickly what this vehicle runs off of and what we'll be upgrading so you know what to look for. There are four screws that hold this cover on. We're not gonna change, we're not gonna take any of these two off either sides because we're not gonna need to pull this apart. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We don't wanna waste the juice. There's no point in being on. Uh, we're not gonna bother with changing the four wheel drive because honestly, it needs it. I'm just gonna be blatantly honest with you. I've tried rubber tires, soft tires, hard tires, tape, different, um, different kinds of hardness. I've tried making rims. I've tried modifying rims to put on. I've tried gearings. I've actually upgraded the motor and then I couldn't get it just right. The gearing wasn't messing up. I've literally gone through it crazy extensive lengths. So this is what it looks like underneath. Your battery that powers it is right here. This is technically, I won't say it's a three cell, uh, it's 9.6 volt. It's three different units that powers it. It's 9.6 volts and the capacity is 320 milliamps. That is very, very small. The last one had a piece of foam. I don't know why this one doesn't have it. And then this is your charging. This is basically the charger right here. The built-in charger is what that is. And this is how you connect it. A lot of folks, when your steering quits working, is typically them pulling them apart and pulling one of these wires. Uh, and if you're looking at it this way, and this is the front and this is the back, blue is always on your right and yellow is on your left. Uh, you can fix it with solder very easily. If you got some skill and you can clean some wire and press it on there right, and maybe use hot glue or some glue, you could technically do that maybe if you're lucky. Um, honestly, these screws right here is what separates how you take the drive shaft out. I would not do it. I, I've been there, done that. Uh, in the end, at the end of the day, it needs the four wheel drive to perform properly. Now it having four wheel drive helps it. So once we remove the cover and we have the battery, this is the connector we're gonna have to think about. So don't have to mess with this. You can leave this as is, set this to the side. In the future, you can always clip it back on and power on the vehicle. That's the nice part about it. Now I've looked for this adapter. I found one. I found one that goes from this to JST, and I found another one that goes from this to Dean's connection, which is this. Now here's the thing. Uh, I don't wanna cut this necessarily, just because of the fact that in the future, if I wanna throw this battery in, or even charge it, I can do that. Nothing wrong with that. Don't remove the charge unit. You don't have to do any of that. That's the nice part about it. Uh, so you're going to have to decide, do some planning. Hey, I want to get an adapter off Amazon, or I want to go ahead and buy just this end, this end right here and solder, you know, by this end alone, which will just be a wire in this end. That's it. And solder it to the battery that I want to buy the type of connection. I recommend Dean's right here, solder that. And then that way. You can unplug and plug that adapter and you can always put your original battery back in if you'd like. And uh, these batteries are more hobby grade. Yes, you're gonna need a charger. And yes, you're gonna need some kind of LiPo alarm to let you know when you're getting low in battery. So this is what I mean. These twin pack right here. The reason why I chose these is I can use them for my airplanes. 
I can use them for my Traxxas TRX4 Sport, by the way. There'll be a 3S video coming, hence the 3S packs and airplanes. And I can also use it for other projects as well, not to mention this one. So I think this is a good size. Before, when I did the first original Jada series, I used the 2600. Let's bump it to 3300 and 50C. I think it'll be fine being 3S power. Um, the other one was 30C, 40C, I think, something like that. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. I ran mine on 3S for hours and hours, months and months, countless tests, beating on it with rubber tires where it had tons of grip and it was very hard on the gears. You can wear out these tires and you can wear out the joints where the screw goes in. Those things can wear. It does take time, depending how much you use it, but you can wear it out. So this battery, of course, is going to need the connection and the solder point. We'll do that in the last part three of the build series. Polarity is the most important part. See the way that plugs in? Then you're gonna know that that's gonna have to, this one up here is gonna have to be positive and the low one's gonna have to be negative. So look at your adapter and see how it's gonna run. Don't touch these, but see how it's gonna run. Uh, and that's very, very important because that's how it's, your polarity is gonna be. You get this wrong like this, this is cooked this car becomes useless. So keep that in mind. I cannot emphasize that enough. One of the most important things is polarity. Second thing you're gonna need once you do this mod, which I'll quickly show you, so you, cause you may have to order stuff offline, is a what's called a voltage reader. This will read the cells. Right now it's currently in storage voltage. It's a brand new battery, 3.8 is storage voltage. You'll set your alarm to about 3.5 or 3.6, once you run it and it reaches those things, this will start beeping, indicating you can go technically to three, six, three, five. I would never go below three, six. That's how I maintain my batteries for long periods of time. Technically, when I fly, I go to about between three, I set it for three, seven. It starts beeping at three, seven. My jets do, and then I land. It gives me a little cushion to land, and the battery will not puff. It won't get out of shape, and it'll last much longer for you. So very important. These, for three of them, I think it's like three or four bucks. A dollar each off of Banggood and other websites. Uh, I'll leave links for them when it's time, or I'll leave links for them in this video as well. And then last but not least, this is a hobby grade charger. You can also go with the $20 version that will charge 3S and 2S. Hot RC, I gave it away with the giveaway. It's about a $20 charger. This is a $56 charger but it'll literally charge every battery under the sun, much higher capacity, much larger batteries, comes with a LiPo bag, comes with an adapter so you can plug it onto your car battery. So if you're not at home, you can charge. I mean, it does everything. Charges USB, PC connection. It does old school um, um, nickel, uh, nickel hydride batteries, night hydrate batteries. So it does it all. Life, you name it, it does it. Ion, you name it. Polymer. It will do it. So that's the only advantage of having a hobby grade like that um, charger. Now I'll get into the soldering with my uh, soldering station once it's time for that part. Um, so that'll be phase three. Phase two will be lights. Uh, in the past video, uh, I think we did lights for I think three dollars. They're normally six dollars and they're on sale for three dollars at a store like Kroger somewhere on bottom. And they're basically the lights that run off of two batteries. You just set the pack in here or whatever, tape it inside the body preferably that way you can pull the body off and it'll be like a, a battery pack here and then you'll hot glue the wires nice and neat around and you'll use the little led bulbs a few here a few here light up what you want to light up you could even do technically a couple for ground effects whatever you'd like there are nicer 10 15 dollar light kits on amazon you can do those as well it just all depends what you want now the cool part about lights is technically running this large of a battery you could splice off of your battery lead and make a plug, add two plugs to this wire. So add another one like a JST plug or whatever adapter you like or whatever adapter you choose. You can buy batteries with Dean's, uh, EC3, JST, XT30, XT60. Just depends what you want. I have a lot of products that use this, so that's the reason why I went with that. You, um, just to show you real quickly, this is JST. This is XT60 right here. That's uh, This is Dean's with an adapter, obviously. Uh, this is EC3. 
uh, three. So you can go with lots of different connectors. Um, uh, of course, you can just buy a cheap balance lead uh, charger that will just balance charge so you don't have to have nothing fancy like that. So that's the cool part about it. So I think I'm going to be going a little bit fancier. I may get a $10 light kit for it and just splice it and run it off of the main pack. So what I'll do is I'll do a couple, of I'll leave this lead on here and I'll splice off of it and I'll do a Dean's and then um, uh, maybe I'll even do three. Maybe I'll do one feed for lights. Maybe I'll do one for battery and then one capability of running off the stock battery. I don't want to eliminate this at this time. This time I want to be able to, hey, if I want to pop this battery in and run it factory, so be it. Uh, but I probably will not once you see the performance and how this behaves with this style battery. Uh, you're not going to want to run it on this. I can tell you now. And the runtime, this is 300. This is 3,000, 3,200. So it's literally 10 times larger and a higher discharge and higher quality. Uh, it, it's just night and day difference. So your turbo button, like your turbo button is going to be enhanced. The performance is going to be enhanced. Um, so we have a few options on the light. I'm going to decide when it's part two of this video because this video is long enough already. Uh, so I'm going to decide that in part two. I think I'm going to split something off of here and even do an off and on switch, guys. We can get a cheap off and on switch. I think you get like four or five of them for like six bucks. And we can screw, we can cut a little hole and then do a little off and on switch on the side for the lights. It's limitless. We could do sounds effects. Um, I really don't want to tear in and try to gear a motor in here and then do proportional steering, tear all this out and do proportional steering. At that point, you're replacing this, you're putting an ESC in there. At that point, just buy a Red Cat Racing. But I think uh, the battery and the lights really sets this apart from the others. The performance will be drastic. The looks will look better, missing the bumpers and being slammed with the lights and the performance golden so there's going to be a three-part series this is part one um so there you have it um you know pop this back in any time so that's the cool part but i think i'm just going to go ahead and order an adapter and then i'll build off of that adapter that way i could just unplug everything plug my stock battery in and run it stock if i like so i'm gonna get these i think these are the s um mp2s or something like that uh i'll have a link below so I think it's going to be the one to the JST, and then I'll just cut the JST off, solder my Deans, connect my battery I want, and when I'm done, I'm going to make a hole through here. You know what? You don't want all this being exposed. Uh, I'm going to make a hole, and this is going to be sticking out like so. Obviously, when I want, I'll just pull this back in, plug this up, and run on stock battery, or I put it through my hole, and then I'm going to cut a channel. Maybe I'm making... Um, I'll probably cut a slot into here where I can use like a Velcro battery strap to strap this battery. And then you can slide it forward and back, back uh, adjusting the balance of the vehicle as well. So you could do that as well. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, this isn't waterproof by any means, but it's a lot nicer to have something covering it, dirt, dust, whatever gets in there. It'll keep it a lot cleaner. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then you could technically be even more technical about it split it with this same connector, leave it here to unscrew it, plug this in, have another one going off here, sticking out, and that's where you connect your other adapters and everything for lights and everything. So I'll see which way I do it because there's so many options. That's why I'm like, I love mine, so I'm excited about it. So I think this is gonna turn out really, really well. So that's pretty much everything. Now, uh, it depends on the connectors you choose and everything. I think next I'm gonna order the lights. So we're gonna do, probably gonna do a $10 light thing. And then we'll also get like the cheap way to do it as well, the five, $6 version. I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that as well. I actually did a whole video on that. It was really long, but watch it. it. It does show you how to do it technically. And if you put the lights behind these, it'll actually glow through and illuminate the lights. Kind of funny. Uh, you don't have to really scrape it too much. You can scrape it to where it's clear. So the light will be brighter, but if you get a bright enough LED, it'll actually light up this. And I think before the Mustang symbol on the other one was like lighter or white color and it like lit up before. So that was interesting. I didn't mean for that to happen or it could have happened to my GTR. I can't remember which one it was, but that was really cool. So I will get, 
Uh, what else? Yeah. So that's the basics of this video. That's everything I want to cover. Uh, this is just a really cool uh, drifter for 30 bucks. 39 at the most. You should not pay more than 39 period. Walmart, Target, 39. Amazon sale right now, 30. They do have them in clearance all the time. And some stores will have them cheaper. If you find them there, even better, guys. So that's going to do it for this one. This is just part one. So uh, part two will be uh, starting the fitting and setting up lights. And in part three, we get the soldering gun, the wires and everything, the adapters. And we'll get... Um, the battery hooked up and get it running with performance. Uh, I wish I had a way to, to touch these leads because I mean the performance is just unreal when you run it um, on those LiPo batteries. It's just insane. That's why I was so excited to do it again because I knew how much of a difference. And a lot of folks asked a lot of questions about this and honestly, uh, the steering wire is one of those weak points. I've had folks buy them brand new out of the box and this the the solder point was weak and it literally just broke right off and the steering wouldn't work. That's all it is. Remember, um, if you're on the pa passenger side, the front side passenger is blue and a uh, left side driver is always yellow. So keep that in mind. Uh, not very hard solder at all. There's already flux. There's already solder there. If they break off, all you gotta do is basically heat it, put a little flux on your wire, a little solder on your wire, and you're golden. Um, so yeah, you can see the wires for the motor back here. These go to the motor. These two go to the motor. This right here goes to the battery. This goes to the steering. That is your antenna right there. And then that set of cables right there goes to your charging with USB. Now, mind you, cannot charge it. Replace the battery on this. You cannot use the USB charger to charge it. It's not going to work. You're going to start a fire in your house. That's another warning. So when you modify, you have to pay attention to polarity. See how it's red to red? Very important. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'll also find a link for RC Hot Charger. I'll find a link for these batteries for you. The RC Charger. These beeping things. The lights. And then you're gonna have to provide your own screwdrivers and I'll maybe find like a cheap soldering gun as well if you wanna go that far. Cause it's nice to be able to solder, to be honest with you. You can do so many more modifications being able to solder. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Plenty long enough, I've said that a few times. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. And uh, I think I'll be getting a pair of snips too and trimming these posts that I think that'll help. Um, and that looks good slammed like that. That looks so much better with the bumpers missing. Look at that. I love it. They're good looking vehicles and they do do a great job uh, drifting, honestly. I plug my battery back up. <laughs> I better not try to drift on this table. <laughs> it wants to spin them, that's for sure. So yeah, and the boost button works great. And I tell you what, even when you change the battery out, the boost button still works. It just gives you that much more power. So or nitrous button, whatever you want to call it. So there you go, guys. Fast and Furious. I noticed that the trim is a little bit different on a controller since I purchased them. Uh, you still get the extra set of tires. Don't forget that little uh, wheel tool is in there with the charging thing right in here. Uh, you just stick in those two holes and press, and then these wheels will slide out. They will wear with time, but they take a really long time, guys. Just leave them on here. I mean, you have to, like, completely wear them out to change them, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two and three, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.